Stoichiometry, so this is the idea that this word stoichiometry means we relate one chemical to another chemical through a balanced equation to predict how much is made, consumed, something like that. Um, let's get all of these parts up. So here's some examples. Now to begin with, if you're going to do a stoichiometry problem, you'll notice this right here, the balanced equation is going to be a very important part. In fact, this is the very first thing you do when trying to solve any kind of stoichiometry question. Now wait, how do you recognize a stoichiometry question? Look at this one right here, example problem 11-1. How many moles of H2 and O2 are needed to make six moles of water? Okay, how do I recognize that I need to do a balanced equation and mole mole calculations just by looking at this? What's gonna give this away, and the biggest thing here, is that it gives you information about one, ele one element or compound, in this case it's water. In fact, I will even um, underline that. Six moles of water, that's the given. But what it asks about is hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So it gives information about one chemical and asks about another different one. That is my cue that I need to come with a balanced equation and then use that balanced equation, and more specifically, even if it doesn't say moles, if it asks about one chemical and gives information about another, I know mole conversions are going to be in there somewhere. So that's because of that, I look at this question, I think, hmm, what do I need to do for this? First thing, gives one chemical, asks for a different chemical, that tells you balanced equation. So after you come with the balanced equation, then what do you do? You identify what you're being asked for, and what's your given. So this is your given because it's got a number and a chemical identity. What are we being asked for? It says how many moles of hydrogen and moles of oxygen are needed. This is one question. This is another different question. So this is asking me, given this many moles of water, how many moles of this am I getting? That's one question answered down here. And how many moles of oxygen? That's a different question answered right here. So because of that, what I do is I start by uh, first of all, I should probably do this to more clearly differentiate what I'm being asked for, circled here, and what I'm being given, underlined here. Um, I take what I'm given, write it down for each calculation, since there are two, and then I need to relate the two chemicals to each other. And how do I relate them? Well, it's by means of mole. So there's my six moles of water, and then I set up a conversion factor so I can relate the water and the hydrogen and one of the things you'll notice here is, like always, moles, if moles is here, it needs to be here so that it can cancel out. Um, and more specific, and beyond that, it's very important to make sure you always have a chemical identity. It is critically important to have a chemical identity because without chemical identities, it's just moles, moles, and moles. And it's impossible for us who are gradient to keep up with what you're doing. So we need chemical identities on every single unit. So there's no exceptions. They must be on everything. So, okay, you've got your given, and it's mold, not just moles, but moles of water. So you put moles of water here so it can cancel, and you're asked for, in this case, moles of hydrogen. So you put moles of hydrogen here so it can be in your answer. Now, this came from the given, but notice these numbers don't match that because they came out of the balanced equation. This is why you need a balanced equation. The balanced equation gives you the mole ratio. So see that two next to the H2? That's where that two comes from right here. See this two next to the H2O? That's because there's a two next to the H2O. This is a coefficient. The coefficient shows up whenever you have a conversion factor that relates two different chemicals. So notice for the one where we do oxygen, because there's no written coefficient that implies that there is a number one here, that's why there's number one for one mole of oxygen. And then two moles of water, because it's saying that there's two waters for every one oxygen molecule. So likewise, there's for every two moles of water, there's only one mole of oxygen molecules. So when you've done that, when you've set that up, what you've got here is moles of water cancel moles of water to give moles of hydrogen as the answer. And then mathematically speaking, this is six times two divided by two leaves you back with the same number again, whereas here, six times one is six divided by two is three. So that's why we get a different number here making sure, of course, that when you're done, you box your answer so you can clearly tell what you intended to be your answer. Um, but this is the big picture idea of how it is you relate 
one substance to another. It's through a conversion factor, and these numbers in the conversion factor must come from a balanced chemical equation. So when we see that with other less simple numbers, the same concept is going to apply. Honestly, this is how you handle mole-mole conversions for everything we do in this unit. This is the basic process. So look at the question. How many moles of hydrogen and oxygen would be needed to make 5.38 moles of water? Again, you start by writing a balanced chemical equation. Then you write your given. There's your given. I'll even underline it to, or let's see, yeah, I'll underline it to emphasize that it is the given. That's why it is the first thing written in each calculation. How many moles of H2 and O2 would be needed? That's what I'm being asked for, so that's why I circled them. So that's two different questions. So how many moles of H2? There's one question. And how many moles of O2? That's another separate question to answer. So what do I do? I write the given. And since the given has moles of H2O, that needs to go on the bottom of the conversion factor. The top of the conversion factor is what I'm being asked for. If I'm being asked for hydrogen, I make sure it's hydrogen up here, moles of hydrogen. If it's moles of water, that canceling here, that's great, but if I'm being asked for moles of oxygen, then I put that here to make sure it winds up in the final answer. Again, the numbers come straight out of the balance equation. Notice where the two came from. Notice where this number two came from next to the water. Notice where this number one came from, and notice where this number two came from. It's the same kind of idea. So, once again, this number times this divided by this gives that answer. This number times this divided by this gives that answer. Make sure to watch as you do this your significant figures because this is three sig figs, so that makes this three sig figs. Why is this not one significant figure? It's because any number that comes out of a formula, be it from here or from here, is always infinite significant figures. Make sure to note that on your note handout. Um, of course, you box your answers right there, and notice, okay, three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs right there. Um, there's another example calculation that gives the same kind of a thing. Now, for those of you who are watching, hopefully this is pretty straightforward. Pause this video a moment and take a sec to solve this, and then I'll put the answer up here, and you can see if your way you solved it matched the way I've got it solved here. So, as a reminder, when you solve this, I'm going to say, okay, this is my given. How much O2, that's what I'm being asked for, is needed to convert all the H2 to H2O. So how much oxygen? All right, so given that, I'm gonna start by writing down the given because I've already got the balanced equation pre-given for me. 12.467 moles of H2. Notice I've got chemical identity and units. This is critically important on an exam. You must have both in order to get your full points. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is set up a conversion factor because that's always gonna be there. And remember, always set up units first. Don't start with numbers. That's how people mess up. So I put moles of H2 here on the bottom. That way you can cancel moles of H2. I'm being asked for O2, so I'm gonna put moles of O2 on top, and then equals, and that's going to equal some number of moles of oxygen. So I look at the balanced equation, one mole of O2, two moles of H2, and so when I do that, it's going to now give me something with units of moles of oxygen. So it's this times one divided by two, rounded to infinite sig figs, infinite sig figs, five sig figs. So the actual calculation, it looks like that, boxed of course. Uh, rounded for significant figures and all that sort of a thing. So that kind of gives the overview of the simple way of doing this in terms of going from moles of one thing to moles of another. Again, um, this is a simple conversion, simple calculation, simple formula. But even when you see more complex stuff, such as this question right here, it does follow the same rules and works the same way.
Now be aware there are cases when you may not be given a formula. Something like this. You may have to come up with a formula on your own. But even once you get past that part, what you're going to do is essentially identical to what was done back here. In that you're going to identify your given. You're going to figure out, you're going to fill in these numbers in the conversion factor based on your balanced equation and then calculate your answer. So it's really not a complex thing. Now, this may or may not be given to you. Again, if it's not given to you, you have to look at the question and say, hmm, if this wasn't given to you, you'd have to understand that it is saying oxygen reacting with this molecule, which means this right here, and then we talked about a long while ago, if oxygen reacts with a carbon-based molecule, if it contains carbon, it makes CO2. If it contains hydrogen, it makes H2O. So anyway, other times you might be given a reaction such as this. Maybe we will give you the reaction. If we do, then you have to balance it. So take a moment, those of you who are watching, see if you can balance this, and then check to see if I balance it the same way as you. So uh, assuming you've paused and done that, let's see what you get. So three carbons. Three carbons, eight hydrogen, let's make that eight hydrogen, and then let's see, what is that? That is three times two is six oxygen, and that is four times zero is four oxygen. It's 10 oxygens, and how do I make 10 oxygens? I put a five right here. So. That is the process you should go through to balance this, because it has been a while since you balanced, so that's a nice little reminder. And that's what I just had a minute ago, but there it is shown separately from the original unbalanced equation. So you balance your equation, and then you can set this up. So those of you watching, go ahead and try this out. See if you can solve this, and then I'll go through the solution. All right, so if you do that, First thing you write is the given. So where's our given? Well, we look at a number, that's a pretty big giveaway. 4.30 moles of propane. What are being asked for? How many moles of oxygen? Okay, so that means I'm gonna start by writing down, I think I've got it animated to show that. Yes, first thing, write your given. Next, conversion factor. Make sure moles of C3H8 is down here so we can cancel. You're asked for moles of oxygen, so that goes here. And then look, once again, the numbers are straight out of the equation. There's a five next to the O2, and there's no number next to this, so you just put a one right there. And then this times five divided by one will give that number, which of course you box after ensuring that three significant figures gets rounded to three significant figures. All right, I think that's a good stopping place for now.